Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. Just a moment here. We'll get the screen share going on. All right. Uh, for those of you new in the room this morning, uh, let me just point out quickly what you're looking at here. We've got the Hawk Scalper here in the top left, Falcon Swing Trader, top right, Eagle Trend Trader, bottom left, and of course the Raptor here on the bottom right. The charts I'm following here are the NASDAQ, that's the NQ. I'm also keeping an eye on gold and the euro dollar. But we've got, um, we've got not a whole lot going on really. <laughs> Just very, very, very quiet sideways market. You can see how the momentum is draining out of the market. This was uh, earlier in the week, or last week, I should say. Yeah, a week ago. And just look at the day break lines, the session break lines are getting closer and closer together. If you're trading today, like real money, please be extremely careful. Oh, Anthony says it's going to be a mad sell off for the NQ today. Well, you could certainly be right about that, Anthony. Ooh, 61.18 is his target. That would bring us back here to the hard edge. And I showed this the other day as well. I may as well take a moment and rebuild it. Take a look at the daily NASDAQ chart. And you can see quite plainly how the market is. It's moving higher to be sure. But what a tiny, tight, little trading range we have. This is going to end up in the textbook somewhere. Showing a market wedge. We have had a breakout above these highs. And so when you get these breakouts, a retest of the breakout is certainly in order. And then the market will show you whether or not it can continue higher or not. So if we just kind of eyeball that, looks like around maybe 60.25 is a possibility. Not a major reset, but... I do believe a correction of some sort is in order. And you can see if we draw the bigger trend line, that kind of brings that area into play, doesn't it? So I'm more, I'm sure more than a few traders will be looking at that zone. That's a, only a 38% retracement. So, I don't know. Fibonacci levels, of course, a little bit more predictive. But there we are. The 
problem is the not only the lack of volatility but the lack of volume these are some opening bars and let's see what kind of volume we're getting off the open ooh 771 wow there's a thousand traded on that one there's 2500 on that one okay that's getting a little better 4500 okay we're getting a little bit of volume coming into the market now a thousand still very very light Uh, this is a, a number two signal that is formed here. So we're looking at a test of the extreme of the overnight. We produce a counter trend signal. The target is the hard edge of the trading band, which would bring us down to around 61.20. We have a second push uh, entry opportunity here as well. Now, folks, I'm going to demonstrate this, but if you're trading real money, I would wait until the market gets a little bit more liquid. This obviously counter trend. Again, counter trend trades. While they do tend to work out under the right conditions, are probably not as reliable as your with trend trades. But there's nothing going on here, so we may as well demonstrate something. In fact, I'd I'm seriously considering suspending the trading room for the remainder of the week just because there is nothing going on here. I had a, this is probably a good time. Uh, I've got a, a couple of emails recently from, from members. Um, and this one member was struggling a little bit. Just a moment. So there it is. Okay. As is the issue with a lot of traders, this person wrote me and said, you know, Eric, I'm really having trouble. I'm struggling with over trading. I've been an over trader since I started. And, uh, and he writes, I, I really understand the types of trades, but I get sucked in when the market is going sideways. I'm trying to stick to the NASDAQ, but really need a game plan. Would I be better off sticking to the Raptor only instead of scalping? I also tend to trade early when the market opens, avoiding... Uh, 9.30, but I'm sure if 9.45 is a bad time for a trade. There are really so many variables. And on they go. I actually get these kinds of emails fairly regularly. It's a very, very common problem. 
and I, I shared my solution, which most of you have heard, but I will share again. Is that first off, you need to take this seriously because overtrading is a serious threat to your success as a trader. So many of us come into the trading world with a production line mentality. We think if we're not working, we're not making money. If I'm not trading, I'm not making money. That is the wrong attitude to have as a trader. But what do you know? We actually saw a little bit of follow through on a trade. <laughs> yeah, way, way to go, Anthony. Anthony says made a hundred million dollars on that trade. Nicely done. There's that little bit of selling spike through there. You don't make more money trading more often. You make money trading by capitalizing on high probability setups. To this end, I suggest that you use a quota, a trade quota. Now, if somebody can come up with something better than that, I'm all ears. This is just something that I've developed. It seems to work. But if somebody has a better solution, please, and you feel like sharing, I would be all all for uh, for knowing about it. The quota system simply means you set a trade quota for the day. How many times you're going to trade? Typically, anywhere from two to three trades a day seems to be enough. Once you get over, say, five or even six trades a day, you're going to be pushing that over trading envelope. The problem is that the market opportunities throughout the day are not consistent. I think it was Floyd who said the other day how you really got to wait for the big players to make their move. And you don't know whether it's going to be morning, noon, or afternoon. But you've got to be patient. You've got to wait for that. Most people can't wait. Most people, like I said, they think they've got to be doing if they're going to be making money. That Jesse Livermore quote comes to mind. The big money is made in the sitting and the waiting, not the trading. Now, for most people, that goes in one ear, tickles their brain for a little bit, and goes right out the other. Oh, what a clever saying. Yeah, I got to remember that. Oh, look, another trade. <laughs> so set yourself a trade quota. Stick to your trade quota. If you miss an opportunity, so what? You're going to miss trades. I miss trades all the time. The objective here is not to take every single trade. The objective is not to take a lot of trades. The objective is not to avoid boredom. There are far less expensive hobbies, certainly far less frustrating hobbies than trading. Trading is a business, and as far as I know, most people are, while their business has a, a purpose to it, you know, you're manufacturing widgets or you're doing something to help somebody. At the end of the day, you're doing it so that you can turn a dollar. That should be your objective in trading as well. You're not here to amuse yourself. You're here to hopefully make a couple of dollars. So learn to focus on those high probability opportunities. Set yourself a trade quota. And when you're starting out, 
she this person only had a fifty dollar a day objective and they're having trouble making that well you see fifty dollars even in a market like the nasdaq is not unreasonable here's the first micro macro cross lower that's a high probability signal we should be able to get fifty dollars out of that signal so there's the signal We'll risk it up to here. All right, we'll, we'll leave it on the two contracts. I would only take the one. But here we go. We're looking to take $50 out of the trade. Come on, get down there. Uh, they're flinching just above our break even. There we go. I'm going to take the trade to break even now, just because the market being the way it is. But there's a very good possibility on a signal like this that we're going to get at least a $50 move. That's not asking a whole lot. And yet this person is having difficulty doing even that. Comments like that tell me that you're chasing the market. You're not waiting. And really, there is a lot of waiting in trading. You have to be patient. And of course, most people aren't. So set yourself a trade quota. Only stay with your high probability trades. If you don't know what your high probability trades are, we have high probability setups for all the tools that we focus on. The first micro macro cross on the hawk happens to be one. Uh, there's high probability signals on the falcon and the eagle and the raptor. The raptor even has prompts to alert you when a high probability signal is setting up. Here's one. Here's one. But look at yesterday. Here's yesterday. We finally got a signal uh, about, uh, looks like an hour, hour and a half before the close. How many of you would have been able to sit there for four hours, five hours before actually taking a trade? Probably not a lot of you. Uh, we've been getting a few requests for a live trading room. The current trading room format is twofold. It's uh, primarily educational based, training based, to show you how to use your tools, to get familiar with your tools. But I also try to point out uh, good trade opportunities to you as well. But there's been uh, requests for a live trading room. And certainly if this is something that interests you, you should email Adam. But in a live room, part of the, part of the problem with doing a live room is people expect you to trade. Right? They have this vision almost like a boiler room type thing where they're going to attend the live trading room and Eric here is going to give me all kinds of trade signals and I'm just going to, I'm going to walk out of there a gazillionaire. Well, yes and no. You might be surprised how little I actually trade during the day. Because I can wait. I can wait an hour, I can wait two hours, I can wait three hours until I get the right setup that I'm prepared to put money on. So I shared these ideas. I said, get used to looking only for the high probability opportunities, have a trade quota, even when you're starting out, just have a one trade. Quota. Try to find that one trade 
during the day that's going to make you money. Uh, here, that first micro macro crosses one. If you don't know whether your high probability signals are working or what high probability signals you should be following, you had better take some time and go through your charts and look at the signals and recognize them and get to, to trust them. So all that said, I get a reply this morning saying, do you think I'd be better off trading the Hawk instead of the Raptor? Or should I stay with the Raptor? So a comment like that kind of tells me that what I was saying didn't exactly sink in. <laughs> Just kind of went right over their heads. Why? Because you can overtrade the hawk just as easily as you can overtrade the raptor. The high probability setups on the hawk are not better, I'm using air quotes, than the high probability setups on the raptor. Yeah, Scott says, do what Mark does. And I, I shared that with this person as well. Um, how Mark has shared, <clears throat> he only looks at a couple of setups. He looks at the first micro macro cross and he looks at the late filter entry in the, uh, in the Falcon. I'm not sure if Mark does the trend change in the Falcon as well, but he looks at like two or three signals and he's prepared to sit there until he gets those signals. I think Peter is another one who, uh, who is very restrictive about the types of trades that he takes. Yeah, like Mark writes here while I was up on my soapbox, you need to set a trade limit and stop when it's hit regardless. Then stick to only the high probability trades and sit on your hands until you see them. I think it was Peter the one week, he was crushing it. I think at the end of the week, and he had $3,000. He was up $3,100 or something. And he was only taking three trades a day. But it's the capitalization, you see. Now, if you're trading a small account, that's not a realistic target for you. If you're trading a small account, you may only be able to trade one contract. But you know what? If you can make 250 or 500 a week, whether you're trading one contract or two contracts, <clears throat> one trade or two trades, 500 a week, 250 a week, that's nothing to sneeze at because after that it becomes a game of multiples. Right? If you can consistently do that week after week after week, well, by the end of the first year, you'll be up $20,000. That's just trading singles. So you, you say you started with 10,000, now you've added 20,000 to it. Now you're trading, you know, a 20 or $30,000 account, all right? You're getting a little bit more clout now. So two years out, you could be up another 20 to $40,000. And that's how it works. That's how it grows. It doesn't grow by trading more. Here, Scott has a suggestion. He says, buy three nice pig pure silver coins, put all three on the left side of the desk, move one coin to the other side of the desk per trade. <laughs> yeah, like an abacus, a very expensive abacus. Yeah, Anthony here writes, I have to learn to wait. That took me three years to embrace to wait. Yeah, Anthony says, I'm done for today. Good job.
Uh, Vincent's asking, will we ever see the Roadrunner like we're seeing these birds? Um, I don't know. Adam hasn't told me. I know uh, he and I are going to have a meeting. Don't know what he wants to talk about. Maybe it's the Roadrunner. Um, you can certainly email him and ask him. Like I said, your feedback, I, I, it means a lot more than when it comes from me. Yes, Elmer, you know, I've suggested this to Adam as well. Elmer says, Eric, maybe you can choose one day a week to trade for real and set the time for the first hour. Either there is a trade or not. But all people know and are aware, so people get to feel what real trading looks like. Um, it's a good suggestion. I've mentioned it as well. Uh, but like I said, your feedback means a lot. Uh, so if this is something you would like to see, then by all means, email Adam and let him know. Um, speaking of trade quotas, I knew a fellow who would, on average, trade four times a year. Yes, you heard me correctly. He was an end-of-day trader, of course. He wasn't a day trader. He would trade four times, three or four times a year. Now that's patience. And yes, he made a very good living trading. You think you have that kind of patience? Could you wait until, and he traded stocks. So he spent, he spent some time researching stocks, finding the stock that was meeting his very specific criteria for a trade. And when he got it, well, he would, he would go in heavy. He wouldn't bet the farm, but he would buy a lot of that particular stock and it, it paid off for him. Many people haven't heard of a fellow by the name of uh, Judah Tassant. He was uh, around in the late 1800s. I'm surprised more people don't know about him, maybe because he never really divulged how he traded. He wasn't that active of a trader. But he never had a losing trade never had a losing trade. How would you trade if that was your objective? If your objective was to never be wrong? Would you chase a signal that was kind of iffy looking? Whether it worked out or not, you know, after the fact? How, how much more um, selective would you be if your objective was to never have a losing trade? And he did it. He was, he gave away most of his wealth. <laughs> he, he was so rich that, uh, yeah, he gave away most of his money. Nicely done, Mark. Mark says, took advantage of that first micro macro cross. And I happen to know that's one of those signals that Mark focuses on. Picked up $200 on that first micro macro cross. Nicely done. Good job. Uh, Scott's asking, how does the Raptor show a first micro macro cross? Well, it doesn't really. The Raptor signals are are unique to the Raptor, but that doesn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't produce the signals. You can see the Raptor actually caught the trend change before the Hawk. The Hawk trend change came 
about three or four minutes after the raptor already produced the signal. Or I guess almost 10 minutes after. So the signals of the raptor signals are unique to the raptor, the high probability setups. Likewise, the high probability setups for the hawk are not duplicated on the falcon. Falcon signals are not duplicated on the eagle and so on. That's why you have all these tools. It's like having the right tool for the right job. If you're, if you're inclined to be handy or if you just have to be handy, you know that using a screwdriver is a lot better than using a jackknife. <laughs> because the screwdriver, of course, is that specialized tool. Yeah, here's a, here's a real issue as well, Stephen writes, the worst part is that trading has been so poor for six weeks or so that I've been losing on most of my trades and now I can barely trade as I've got so much doubt to enter. It's very difficult to be mechanical in your trades. It's very difficult to, especially when you've been suffering drawdowns, but again, there's nothing wrong with waiting. There's nothing wrong with saying, well, the market's a little bit thin right now. I'm just going to watch or I'm going to wait for the market to do something. You know that, here's that NASDAQ chart again. You know that if we get a breakdown out of this, wedge type formation even though it's certainly possible you see some of these monster bars even though it's certainly possible to get a range like this in a single day it's probably not all that likely what is more likely is that we'll see the market break down a little bit and it'll maybe come down for a couple three days and then there's going to be a little hiccup and they'll get back near the highs and now it's going to be decision time so if we get this little break down to the short side i would be looking for this chance for the market to recover and I would be looking for buying opportunities. Then as it gets back up here near the 6150 zone, I would be waiting to see either the market trade lower or trade higher. If it trades higher, I'm going to keep buying. If it trades lower, now I'm going to get serious about selling. And it's not, again, that we're going to have a monster sell-off. But it, let's say the market may be developing a sideways trading range, which is entirely possible, in which case we could see the market even slip as low as 5,800. There's still lots of room through here for the market to head lower. So what? So I didn't get on until a little bit later big deal so long as I can take a trade and have uh, some confidence in it and you know as as Steve said if you take trades and they don't work out well that starts to erode your confidence so again I think it goes back to really waiting on those high probability setups really being selective, running a trade quota of sorts, leave adequate stops. I think that's important as well. 
You don't want to strangle your trade. Uh, we've got something resembling a double pullback here in the in the Raptor now. So the market pulls into the trading cloud, comes out, produces a signal, pulls back into the trading cloud, comes out, produces a signal. It's not quite a number one signal just yet, but it's kind of close. Uh, Anthony thinks we're going to see more of a sell-off. Next resistance zone down here, 6105 half. This um, double pullback signal does tend to be a pretty reliable signal. Uh, it was actually what well, we were going to have the Raptor produce the number four signal. It was going to be the fourth signal, but it just proved to be too many variables to program because sometimes this develops quickly, sometimes it can be more drawn out. It just proved to be too difficult to do. Yeah, good, uh, good advice here from Mark. Mark says it's not an overnight change. You need to practice patience and then practice some more. Through plenty of patience practice, it will become a habit and the spell will break. Never revenge trade. Stop and live to fight another day. Tomorrow is there are other op always opportunities. And, you know, I wish I could say I've never revenge traded. <laughs> but now I suppose I have the sense to at least move the market, move the system into sim mode. It never ends well, though. Uh, Scott's asking about uh, the other DTS birds. He doesn't see them on the website. You'll have to write Adam. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with how the website is set up right now. So you'll want to want to check with Adam on that. All right. So we've got a, obviously a sideways consolidation building here. Uh, early trend change signal here on the Falcon and here's that double pullback again on the Raptor. We're getting closer to that number one cloud crossover signal now. There we go, a little bit of a breakdown. Let's see if we get a second push entry opportunity on that. A second push entry is a great way to go as well when the market is obviously thinner as it is today. Can I risk it up there? Nope, that's going to be out of reach. Uh, let's try it here to that little swing. So you could see this as an early cloud crossover. The clouds crossed. They're not completely crossed. That's why it hasn't printed yet. The market does that little pull back into the cloud, the cloud pushes it out, and there's your cloud crossover signal. Uh, 
Um, yes, thanks for bringing this up, Mark. I've mentioned this before too, but it bears repeating. Mark says, keep a journal religiously so you can see the mistakes and learn from them. I had some of the same issues when I started four years ago. All the things I mentioned are what helped me overcome my bad habits. You have to be able to recognize it though before you can begin to fix it. Ooh, look at that. They slipped me a couple of ticks too. That's never a good sign. So, yes, that's so true. You know, if, and I think that's the biggest benefit of keeping a trading journal. I don't keep a trading journal to review my trades afterwards. I'm not sure I've ever actually opened up my trading journal other than to check my PL or double check my PL. Uh, open a trading journal to uh, to see my trades and say, oh, look at look at this trade that I did. But there's the act of writing it down, and I do believe that a handwritten journal is the way to go. You can keep a computerized journal as well, but you should still write things down. And the simple act of writing something down imprints it on your mind. So when you find yourself writing the same things over and over and over again, you're going to learn from that. It's going to imprint. Thanks, Steve. Steve says, uh, crude oil fun in 20 minutes. Well, we may have to check that out. Crude oil inventory has been a bit of a snooze fest lately. All right, I'm going to force this trade to break even as well. I got in late because of the slip, so I'll just take the break even on that. Had I gone in where the signal printed, I think I would have hit my high probability target. Look at that. Just tagged it. Anthony writes, powerful trading day today. Usually the market doesn't move fast within an hour. Hit two targets. Funny though, usually it's the first hour and a half of trading where the market really does tend to do something. Most times, but not lately. Certainly after the first couple of hours of trading, like after or just as they really get into their lunch hour break around um, 11.30, 8.30 Pacific, you should be able to recognize some sort of trend. Well, yesterday was pretty dismal. Here, look at the Raptor. So, here we are at a couple hours into trading. Do we recognize a trend? Uh, well, no, <laughs> not really, I don't think. Uh, the market opened here, so this is the morning session right here. Well, I suppose if I had to choose, I'd say maybe an uptrend. We broke the high. 
the high of the morning. Maybe there's an uptrend there. Get a little bit of a pullback, maybe come out with a buy signal. There's a buy signal. Oh, and that worked into the number one signal. If we go back, uh, here was the day before. This is where the market opened. Is there a trend here? Well, again, not really, right? Bigger picture, we're kind of stuck on the lows here. Otherwise, I may be inclined to say look for a sell signal. The Raptor coming back actually with the buy signal, and I think that had some, oh no, it didn't have enough follow through. So it does look like we did have a little bit of a bearish trend and a little bit of bearish follow through. Let's do one more day, because we don't have a whole lot going on. So here we are now a couple hours into the day. Do we have a trend here? Market opening right around here. That day really looks sideways, doesn't it? Today it looks like we're going to have, be able to say the market's in a downtrend, however, after a couple hours in. Probably going to see a little bit of an uptick here now. Broken down through this little support area. You see how we have this triple bottom here? Broke down. Now we're back inside there. We may see a little bit of an uptick actually. Well, there we are. That may well have been the move of the day. Gold has produced this hard edge cell signal. And it's been sitting on this bar. I oh, see that bar just formed. It took about 20 minutes for this bar to form. And we still not complete. 20 minutes and counting. And this is gold. Oh my gosh, what a snooze fest. We'll take a look at crude oil here, see if anything's going on in crude worth looking at for the crude inventory report coming up.
So we've got, I don't know, is that a bracketable range? Look at this. This is just... So crude oil opened here. We've printed one, two, three, four bars since the open. Is that crazy or what? Well, there's not really a range here to bracket, I'm afraid. Not yet, anyways. We can watch it. We can um, maybe let the report release. And then look at um, bracketing it. I think we'll put that on the shelf for now. Here's a little bit of a rally. As we trade back here toward the hard edge around the 61, 17, 61, 18 area. Just no market participation. Aye. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but this truly is painful. Thank you. 
So I'm still here, just nothing going on. Back into the hard edge of the trading band, and normally we anticipate a reaction at that point. As they try to push through there. All right, a couple minutes until crude inventory. So we'll take a look at that. And then we may just end up closing up shop unless somebody has other questions or if there's something you would like me to focus on Stephen says, so uh, also when I make money, I pay all my bills, dream of all the toys I want. Now I have to put off my dreams till better days. <laughs> Stephen says, I remember the market took a crap like this, I believe in 2004, 2005. Very eloquently put, Stephen. <laughs> yes, it was probably at least a decade ago when we saw something like this. I don't remember the market being this subdued for this long. They are certainly constipated. But there's nothing you can do about it, right? It's a part of trading. Your job is to take what the market is giving. You cannot do any more or any less. All right, so here's the inventory report coming out. You can see the bar actually getting a little bit more active now. Got the sell signal <clears throat> off a very quick little test of the extreme. So if we wanted to do a bracket trade, we know the top end is probably up here. And we'll see if we can get a bullish bar to form. We're getting support, looks like off of this zone here around 52.20. All right, so here's the bottom end. Uh, again, a very dull crude inventory report. Doesn't look like it caught anybody by surprise. And another yonder. Wow. 
crazy. Well, you could leave that bracket in if you wanted. Who knows, maybe we'll see some follow through on it. Right now, however, it's really subdued. All right, boys and girls, uh, if anybody has any questions, please type away. I will wait for you. But otherwise, I think we're going to button up shop here. There's really not much going on. The NASDAQ putting in a little bit of a rally as anticipated. Didn't really get a tradable signal out of the deal, but that's just the way things are going right now. Yep, see you, Scott. I'm I'm gonna I'll probably be here Thursday and Friday, but Scott says have a good weekend. See you Monday. I think that's the plan, folks. <laughs> Honestly. There's nothing to trade here. Not until we get a little bit more volume come back into the market. No other questions? All right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow unless you hear from me otherwise. Talk to you then. Bye for now.